me you're watching the big picture with me Frank Rawson Ferreira the monetary policy committee of the reserve bank of india on thursday effected a 25 basis points cut in repo rate in its second bimonthly policy review of this financial year after the cut the repo rate now stands at 5.75% the mpc also changed policy stance to accommodative from neutral this was the third rate cut in a row by the central bank repo is the rate at which the central bank lends to commercial lenders the committee also revised its gdp growth for fy20 downward to 7% from 7.2% in the april policy it sees growth in the range of 6.4 to 6.7% in the first half of the financial year and 7.2 to 7.5% in the second half with the risks evenly balanced apart from this the reserve bank of india did away with charges on fund transfers through r TGS and NEFT routes to boost digital transactions and ask banks to pass on the benefits to the customers. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will head two separate cabinet committees on investment and growth and employment and skill development, underscoring the urgency in the new government to revive the slowing economy and generate more jobs. On this edition of the Big Picture, we will analyze the decisions taken by the authorities to address economic challenges. Joining me on the program today are Ajay Dua former secretary Ministry of Commerce and Industry Ashok Nag former advisor to the RBI AK Bhattacharya editorial director of the Business Standard and Banu Chandar Nagarajan former consultant World Bank Washington DC Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of the big picture Mr so, Dua let me begin uh, the show with you So why has the RBI gone in for a third straight rate cut I think the situation probably warranted it the rbi governor in the statement after the effecting of the rate cut pointed out that the growth impulses in the economy had slowed down in q4 of last year to as low as 5.8% yeah. and that they feared there were many headwinds which needed uh, which could probably keep this at the level of growth uh, much lower than what had been anticipated so one of the ways to handle it is the repo cut the repo rate the lending rate in the economy and it could affect this change a third in a row as you mentioned because there was the in, the in inflationary pressure in the economy has been benign the inflation has consumer price index uh, is at 2.9 well within the band of 2 to 4% which the mpc has been given for effecting these changes and al alongside that the there is what we saw was a slight reversal of the food prices mm. otherwise it would have been even lower than 2.9 but certainly there is a bit of a pressure on in the core inflation but, but still manageable so i would say think that by using the monetary instrument which was available to the government uh, to the rbi the this rate change has been effected and finally by calling it accommodative they have passed they let the markets know that if there is need for further reduction right. they would even be open to that in its in their future reviews or the policy well. reviews sure sure uh, ashok nag let me come to you now i'm going to take the point that mr doa was making forward so the mpc has changed the policy stance to accommodative from neutral what does that mean and your thoughts on the stance <clears throat> so when uh, rbi makes it from neutral to accommodative basically rbi is giving a signal that the there is a need for monetary policy easing in the near future because when you say accommodative that means rbi will accommodate a need for much more liquidity and the interest cost of the pricing of the credit to be lower so that there is a kind of a boost to the economic growth see this is okay fine so far the intention of the rbi absolutely no problem there are two issues which are part germane to this which we should be concerned with this what is the accommodative what is the way the is the interest rate changes is the only factor that will determine 
credit offtake, which is very, very sluggish. The banks, see, when the, there is a, you know, there is a, this problem of financial crisis, there is a, a quantitative easing was one of the very new kind of a policy was adopted by the central banks of the developed countries. Because it was coming that we have interest rates almost has been zero. There is no scope for interest cut. Mm. Now look at the in India. Our, see, in the case of the developed countries, the checking accounts, there is no interest. In India, savings accounts, most of the things are almost like a checking accounts for the salaried employees, most of them. Now here it is a 3.54 percent. You can say that this is a kind of floor beyond which the, I don't think you can bring the interest rate down. We are almost coming to that low end. Now, if the banks are saddled with a lot of NPAs, okay, they are not able to the give credit, okay, and there is must be there is a demand side also. There may be some problem, but point is that is it the by interest rate changes is the only way is that RBI's accountability policy would look like, or they would require some more some other kind of instruments to see to it that the NPA burden which is there on the banks. Uh, does not prohibit them. How to make that is very important. So I think that's RBI, a very valid I point that you've made. I'm going to take that point that you're making, you know, whether it should, the RBI should only concentrate on rate cuts or should there be other instruments as well. I'll come to that in just a bit. But before that, uh, Mr. Bhattacharya, if you look at the MPC, you know, it has spoken about a sharp slowdown in investment activity being a major concern. Now, how can that be addressed? Well, I think uh, uh, the slowing down of the investment activity uh, and uh, the RBI's response uh, will have to be seen as a part of a package. Uh, it's because inflation rates uh, have remained benign and because investment activities have weakened, therefore the RBI is responding not only with a, with a cut uh, in the repo rate, but also with a change in the accommodative uh, its stance, which is from uh, neutral, it has become accommodative. Now, there are two questions which uh, bother me at this point, uh, which is one is that the RBI also admits that the past two rate cuts, you know, 25 basis points cut, which means 50 basis points, the transmission has been only to the tune of 42 percent. In other words, that the RBI repo rate has come down by 50 basis points in a space of four months, but the interest rates have actually come down by only 21 basis points. So I think RBI is expressing concern. So if there is a challenge in RBI's monetary policy uh, supervision, the challenge is how do you make sure that this transmission gets better from 42 percent to at least 60 percent, 70 percent, that's one. And number two, that while you are changing your stance, what is the assurance that the RBI, the Monetary Policy Committee has got from the government of India that the government's fiscal mathematics will stay true to the script that was laid out a few months ago, mm. which is that it will remain, fiscal deficit will remain 3.4% and it will be following a trajectory which is going towards 3%. Now, if the government presents a budget, in less than a month from now, wherein the fiscal deficit projection for the current year is not 3.4%, but let us say 3.6% or 3.5%, then what happens to the RBI's uh, stance and the move that it has taken? Because what happens is that the moment the government becomes a bigger borrower than what it was, then the pressure on interest rates so whatever interest rates you may have cut, so that impact will be neutralized by government coming in as a big borrower. So right. these are the two issues that we need to be really carefully watching. One is that in what way the transmission can get better. Now transmission cannot get better if government comes and borrows more. Right. And transmission also cannot get better unless even if the credit availability is there, but the the capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector, and in this policy only mm. RBI admits that the, the capacity utilization in the manufacturing sector has moved up only by two, two percentage points, right. from 75% to 77 percentage points. Sure. So therefore, Indian industry is still not 
in a in a in a you know you know in a tearing hurry to go in for fresh investments and borrow more money sure which is why the credit growth has taken not for corporate trade growth has taken in the retail sector so i think while the rbi's response is very positive mm. welcome needed but we need to be watchful on all these fronts on transmission government's borrowing program capacity utilization level because investment activity is still weaker so these are the broad areas that we need to be watchful of right. of other other days. things also need to be taken into consideration is what you are is what you are suggesting all right uh, banuchandra nagarajan let me bring you to the picture now so the gdp growth for fy 20 has been revised from 7.2% to 7% so why is that so does that mean that the economy is slowing down is that is that a problem for us yeah i mean uh, <coughs> uh, probably the 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 initial uh, monsoon forecast that they have got which determines a lot of how the agriculture bit of our economy is going to go uh, is probably an indication of that and uh, probably slowing down of investment and manufacturing but uh, talking about the interest rate cut i think uh, the rbi has done a wonderful job it's a it's a very tricky number uh, the rbi has uh, thought through it over a long period of time uh, as you as my other uh, co panelists told like this is the third uh, cut and uh, and also they have given a they've changed the uh, the stance to accommodative from neutral which means that there won't be any rate cut i mean it uh, it can stay the same or like they can uh, cut it down further so because um, in uh, uh, finding out the correct interest rate is more art than science okay because there has to be fiscal considerations how the government is going to like present the next budget is going to be of concern for example in the previous uh, meeting like how how much money would have flown during the election time would have been a concern then there is uh, the us china trade war then the preferential trade agreement between us and india was under uh, was uh, was being worked on so so many things and the monsoon last time was actually uh, did not uh, live up to the expectations so there were so many uh, factors that came into play so the rbi i think was very calibrated uh, very thoughtful and had a long term vision Uh, on doing it in a very slow calibrated way okay slow and calibrated a systematic way is what you're yes. suggesting all right uh, looking forward now mr uh, mr dua are these challenging times for the indian economy surely they are otherwise even the reaction of the government soon after coming coming into power the second time has been i think right from day one now economic issues you can see that the prime minister in the very first meeting of the cabinet announced the extension of the prime minister kisan yojana to cover every farmer by adding 2 crore people and it's going to obviously cost something they know that some amount of stimulation of the economy particularly at the end where it is required the rural areas the small farmers and the farming community as a whole the government addressed that and they have that headroom today because the inflation as we discussed earlier inflation is manageable right now so some amount of money being pushed into the rural areas does have its rewards in stimulating the economy the it is better than in my mind than giving a financial stimulus to in organized sector per se if you increase the demand for its products that's better similarly if you if you lower the borrowing rates what the reserve bank has done now and what it's been doing for the last two on two occasions is a better way of handling it then yesterday the prime minister announced that he would be heading two groups one on gdp and growth and the second on unemployment and skills one probably a four member four senior members five and 10 prime minister plus four yeah. and the other prime minister plus nine mm. though it's yet to be notified probably they are waiting for some amount of consultations and the, with the chief minister in the niti aayog meeting which is scheduled next week the fact of the matter is accommodative stance is also going to help to my mind by keeping slight surplus liquidity in the economy right the transmission the the, the transmission cuts being passed oh, cuts being passed on in transmission to the customers mm. had it been neutral then people don't know what's going to happen in future right they would probably be holding back but when you know that the 
Reserve Bank is going to be taking an accommodated, accommodated, accommodated stance. stance. Yeah. So maybe now instead of 42%, we might see 10, 15% more hmm. of the cuts being passed down the line. Sure. Finally, I, I would say challenges is going to get compounded, what we are facing today, if, God forbid, the rains this year play truant. So far, the monsoon is delayed in Kerala and the not only is it going to be causing much more you know shortages of water supply drinking water kettle fodder for the kettle etc but it would again slow down the economy by less income generation in the rural areas with its compounding effect on the rest of the economy sure. so i'm keeping my fingers crossed so lots, that the a lot is riding on the rains as well as what you're suggesting and absolutely. we have to watch out for that it's already delayed let's hope that uh, we get plentiful rains this time around because the economy needs it. Ashok Nag, I'm going to take the point that Mr. Bhattacharya and Mr. Dua were both making, you know, about this, uh, about the banks not reciprocating to the rate cut and not extending the same to its customers. So, do you believe that this time around it's going to be different as far as the banks are concerned because it's an accommodative stance? And uh, also, more importantly, of course, uh, will this help in spurring private consumption growth? See, the stickiness in this, uh, you know, the failure to transmit the monetary stance and the stickiness in the interest rate, you know, margin is also a deflection of a lower productivity of the banking sector. The interest margin which is there in India is definitely much higher than many of the other countries. And RBI, see, point is that in what way RBI can force uh, and at least nurse the banks to do these things. That is what RBI must look into this. See, point is that if you reduce the suppose interest rate on the deposit side, liability side, okay, how much the bank will be able to do it and what is the impact of that in the leakage of the deposit from the banking to the non-banking sector? That is one point as to be understood. And banks are today, suppose they reduce these things, and it has to be done in it simultaneously with the government's other kind of borrowing, like say KVP, like say other kind of NSC, these kind of things, they do not react to the interest rate so easily, okay? They are taking a lot more time. Unless there is a kind of a coordinated policy stance in this case, they, these kind of a stickiness in the interest margin may continue. And the transmission mechanism, RBI is talking about this failure of the transmission mechanism, not now, for a long time. But it is still not be able to solve this problem. What is the core, what is the root cause of this particular thing must be seen. And one of the things I believe that productivity analysis of the banking sector is extremely important. Right, right, all right. Mr. Bhattacharya, you know, I'm going to go back to a point that Mr. Nag was making in his earlier uh, comments, in his opening remarks, of course. He was talking about should the role of the RBI be limited to just cutting rates? or should it use other instruments as well? What can some of these other instruments be? Well, in my view, you know, uh, Reserve Bank of India is a monetary policy authority. Uh, and uh, what it can do is probably uh, going beyond uh, monetary policy, supervision, policy review and supervision. It can look at the health of the financial sector and the health of the financial sector is in not good shape. You have an NBFC crisis there. You have the bank NPAs problem, which has still not been completely been tackled. So there is need to, to uh, and RBI is also the financial sector regulator. So probably, you know, uh, uh, monetary policy instruments will work far more effectively if along with that, you have a healthy uh, uh, NBFC sector. Because please remember our banks were hugely dependent on the NBFCs. They were actually borrowing hugely from NBFCs. So today, if you are seeing this, you know, NBFC crisis of one after another, uh, NBFC is defaulting, it is actually there is a, a, a knock-on effect on the banks. So therefore, it is fine that the RBI reduces interest rates, sends out a positive signal, but going beyond if you want to make the banks a little more responsive and able uh, to transmit that repo rate cut into actual interest rate cut and the corporate sector can pick up those credits, then you also need a healthy financial sector. The banks need to be healthy. The NBFC, comp NBFC companies need to be healthy. Today, I don't think we can say 
uh, with any safety that either of the sectors are actually in the pink of their health. Mm. Yes, things are being tackled, things are being sorted out, but I think it is very important that the financial sector is brought back to its pink of health, without which the larger goal that Mr. Dua talked about of a growth revival, you know, how will you get more investments going in the economy? You cannot get just investment by Indian companies coming and investing money. Where will they get the money from? So you need the NBFC sector and the financial sector to be revving up, to be healthier, so that they are there to offer the financial support for making public-private partnerships <coughs> or lend money to projects. And equally important would be uh, the, the, the challenge uh, that uh, the, the banks will be faced uh, will be facing in 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 recovering their dues which are already there so right. i think it's a it's a it's a, it's a comprehensive thing yeah. so going beyond interest rates you need to have the the banking sector uh, to be better off so it has to be the government list. the government is doing its part the government right. is is recapitalizing the banks government is pushing in for mergers there are more mergers in the offing, so that will make the financial sector stronger. So it so has I, to be holistic and all-encompassing is what you're suggesting. Absolutely. Yes, yes, Mr. Doha, you wanted to make a point. Uh, one of the announcements made today by the RBI was that it has already set in motion a liquidity frame, review of the liquidity framework, which will look at the not just the bank finance, but also the non-banking finance yeah. hmm. flow, and that the report of this committee, internal committee of the RBI, is expected towards the end of June or the end of July. July, yeah. So hopefully, the point which Mr. Bhattacharya has made so eloquently is something which is seized off that they have to look at the overall liquidity and that repo rate by fixing of or adjusting repo rate by itself is not enough, and they have to be looking at the players in it. Have to how what how can they be made activated in it. And I would have also thought that one way forward, apart from the rate cut, is the RBI looking at the CRR. CRR, right. CRR right. hasn't been visited for a while now. Sure. It continues to be at a 4%, 4 and that is something which could have helped if the government, if the, it was slightly lowered right. in getting more liquidity into sure. the market. Sure. Banu, you know, let's look at the larger picture now and look at uh, you know, the global economy as well. That's something that the RBI touched upon as well. Now, how are and will we be impacted uh, as a result of global headwinds? Well, uh, that's a very tricky question, actually, uh, because uh, recently, like, uh, United States is threatening to impose a 5% tariff on Mexico. Mm. Okay, so some it ha it's happening, like, in the other side of the globe. But that's having a, a, a rollover effect on oil prices. Okay, so how that is going to affect is like we have to something we have to wait and see. So how is the the trade war between U.S. and China? How is it going to shape up? That is something we have to wait and see. So uh, as I was telling before, like uh, this art of interest rate setting is like a very very tricky uh, tricky business. Um, in fact, like uh, like what my other other panelists were talking about. Even though the if you, if you're looking at an investment perspective, this is just only a small bit. Uh, it is just a band-aid, but the surgery has to be done in terms of systemic reforms that many of my co-panelists were like advocating now. Developing a corporate bond market, which uh, which is a very imp which actually makes the pass through much easier. Reforming the banking sector, and there were conflicts of interest within uh, uh, the RBI supervisory powers. So many other things. Other than that, like how how the government itself is performing. For example, uh, the provision of electricity and. Uh, roads, so on, like they, it has spurred a lot of consumption. So not only just in the financial sector side, like the other infrastructure development and other overall economy, how it is being managed over a period of time will determine the success of uh, our economy going forward. Sure. Talking about going forward, quick closing comments from all my guests on the best way forward, starting first with you, Mr. Ashok Nag. Uh, see, first thing I would like to tell that uh, RBI must look into the beyond interest rate. Interest rate is definitely a very important policy instrument and RBI is on the right path uh, as far as the changing the uh, from the neutral document stance. But I think too, if you want the credit to pick off, which is actually the ultimate your objective for giving a stimulus to growth, mm. you must look into two things are there. One is that how, as one of my co says, financial health of the banking sector. Uh, they are suddenly so much NPA. What kind of other policy instruments we can really resort to 
to make the credit growth take off is very important. Just interest rate policy change may not really give you the impact which the RBI is expecting. So something more innovative, something more new things, RBI has to look into this. Right. This is the mind. Yes, Mr. Bhattacharya. You know, uh, uh, why are we talking about uh, interest rate cut? We are talking about interest rate cut because the economy needs higher growth and moderate inflation. Now, if you want to achieve that, uh, this is one end of the spectrum. The, but on the other end of the spectrum, is you have to get investments going. Now, how do you get investments? And I think the government cannot disclaim its responsibility towards reviving investment. I am not saying that the government should go in for higher fiscal deficit, but there are many other ways by which the government can actually create, a, create an enabling environment by which more investment can take place. For example, the, the road and highways minister, Mr. Nitin Gatkari, has just two days ago has talked about an investment target of 15 lakh crore in roads and highways. Now, if let us say if a, if a platform is made by which such investment can be made and you, government doesn't need to spend the money, but let the private sector and why the private sector even get the foreign investor bring in and let them invest money into a uh, road sector which is becoming very remunerative. Look at the kind of roadways and the expressways are being built in the Ut Ut Uttar Pradesh. Now, I think that's a, that's a crying need of the hour that we need more roads, better roads uh, by which economic activities and access to markets get better. Right. So, so infrastructure is the key, is what key issue and you need more investment there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Banu? Uh, right, rightfully, the focus is on growth, uh, jo economic growth, jobs and investment. Uh, the, the RBI has done its part with the expansion of its policy by cutting interest rates. Next, next month during the budget, I think uh, the government is going to do its bit in the fiscal, uh, fiscal path with, with its many uh, investments in infra uh, social infrastructure um, and actual physical infrastructure and so on. And uh, two uh, important committees have been formed today. So I think the, the focus is now solely on economy, jobs and growth, which is very nice. Uh, so hopefully like the execution bit is good and also the, the rain gods are benign this time. All right. And uh, Mr. Dua, close the show for us with the concluding remarks. I think what is required now is increasing the consumption in the economy. For the first time after many reviews, we found that the government itself accepts the, review, accepts the premise that it is the consumption in the economy which led to the slow down in the Q3, uh, Q4 of Q4, uh, yeah. last year. So the, the, in that, probably the government, in order to keep that fiscal target of 3.4%, has cut down on expenditure. One estimate a newspaper yesterday gave was $1.4 trillion reduced government expenditure. I think the government will have to get back in the short run to its the level of expenditure which it was making and make sure that the demand in the economy increases, which will help what was pointed out earlier, capacity utilization in the organized sector, which is an issue of bothering everybody. But longer run, it cannot be the government consumption or the government investment. It has to be private sector. And for that, we have to get a whole lot of things ready, including get the banks and the NBFCs back to their healthy stage of being able to lend and that would require certainly action of, on a several fronts so that the banks and our lending institutions become healthier once again. All right. All right. So what's emerging out of this debate is clearly the economy is challenging at this point in time and there are several issues that need to be addressed. We need to take a holistic and an all-encompassing uh, route really to try and address several of these problems. The public sector has done its bit, but it's time for private consumption and private investment to pick up is what the panelists are suggesting. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.